Hello from this is Jotto and welcome to my third and final video I'll be doing to cover Star Crusade. Now for this video I'll be doing a very brief deck tech of my Anunnaki deck that I've been uh, tinkering around with and also playing two or three games on ranked uh, just to show it off a little bit depending on length. So I'll do two long games but if one of them is a bit shorter then I'll, uh, I'll squeeze in the third one. But anyway so this deck is a very very slow deck by nature it kind of fits in with the Anunnaki theme where it is a slow deck that tries to build up psychic charge so you've got things like Marduk's Faithful that gives you a psychic charge at the end of every turn and I've also got a Disciple that gives me a psychic charge whenever I use a hero power and one of the modules I'm using is Draw Essence now Draw Essence basically gives me psychic charge if I have pacified units on the board my board and theirs so I've got four pacify type effects in the deck I've got the uh, the two just pacify so pacify random enemy unit and also yep there it is emanate uh, emanation which is a cipher that pacifies the unit when it's deployed now there is a bit of a sub theme in this deck of making my opponent's board useless in fact that's often how I win games is because the other decks are faster I just make sure that they have tons of zero attack and pacified stuff on their board while I build up psychic charge and start powering through in the late game so I can reduce the attack with Mind Anchor, I've got the Pacify effects, I've got a Cypher that reduces attack by 5 when uh, attacked into, just things like that. Now besides that, how do we win? Uh, so we've got Steel effects like Paranoia, which is always handy. Uh, we've got the Rapid Strike team that I always like in my decks, uh, just 3 damage is quite nice to get um, for a removal spell. And the big late game, so we've got the Biomonger, or Biomonger. Now, this guy actually gains a lot of life. Four or five stats is not very big, but he'll gain probably six life, and that's enough to keep the game going long enough so I can power out things like Colossus, 7-7 seven, seven with a shield. I just like this guy. There's a couple other options, but uh, given my collection, this guy is doing a good, good job. And also Dominate. Because the game is slowed down so much, I can get a lot of Psychic Charge, meaning Dominate will cost less. And therefore, I can steal his win conditions. Uh, the rest of the deck is pretty much just filler. So you got your standard silences, taunts, things like that. But anyway, let's see if we can get into a ranked game with this. Uh, I've actually played a lot of different factions, but I think Anunnaki, uh, Hierarchy, and Terran are the ones that I've just like playing the most. Not the ones I like the design on the most, but the ones I like playing the most. So, it's an Anunnaki Mirror. I can't remember what that hero power does, so I can't really use that for mulliganing. I'll get rid of a rapid, uh, rapid Strike team. And also... No, I'll keep the Nullify. I think I may need it. Now, you may notice I'm running 39 cards, which is an oddly specific number. The reason for it is because I want a very high life total, but I also want an extra card in Control Mirrors. <laughs> That's basically what that's about. Uh, yeah, I'm staying off the 40. I want a very high life total so I can slow the game down as much as is humanly possible. But, unfortunately, it also means that I don't get the extra card in most games. As you just hear that in the background, that's because my opponent has a mulliganed. But anyway, start Mystic Apprentice. This will ping something at the end of every turn. Uh, but yeah, if I have 40 cards and I never get a card... He's at 10 starting life. Okay. So he gains one psychic charge under each turn, but he starts with 15 less HP. Massive drawback, but very powerful effect. And his other effect is friendly unit on the right gains zeal. That means it gains plus one attack for each of my creatures. Now that means he has 25 cards in his deck. Mind wipe. So yeah, he takes the, uh, the nullify. I'll just get a faithful uh, set up here. Start generating a bit of psychic charge, and if he doesn't remove it, then, well, I get to keep generating more. <laughs> this is going to be a very, very slow early game, I can tell. Alright, so I've got things like psychic rot. I saw that there. I get to destroy something with uh, attack equal less to my psychic charge. Well, I think we'll just play another one of these, try and ping off, uh, ping off some of this, slow him down a little bit. 
But yeah, this matchup should be very, very slow. This is basically a control mirror in every sense of the word. So I'm expecting this to last probably about 10 to 15 minutes. It would not be surprising. Prophetic Visions. Now, he only draws two because he didn't have the, uh, the Psychic Charge required to draw more than that. Got my Colossus. I've also got Dominate, which is getting reduced in cost, which should be important. And more importantly is that I'm ahead in the Psychic Charge race right now. Now, what do I do with this? He could Psychic Rot it. That's about all he can do, though. The Paranoia... I think if he spends a hard removal on this, then I can stick a Colossus. So I'll just uh, go for this. And maybe I won't lose any Psychic Charge if I play it like this. Oh, no. That is a problem. So, Syndicate Enforcers uh, read every time anyone plays a card, deals one damage to a random new character. Which means, if I play anything, I'm going to take extra here. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take out one of them. And I think I'll just Paranoia the other one. The real question is, do I do anything about this? I don't want to use Mind Wipe, because I think that will start hitting quite hard. I really don't want to use anything. So I'll just leave this around. I'm not really sure what he's playing, so this is an interesting uh, little experiment for me. Okay, so I want to clear his board because of the zeal thing eventually. How do I do that? So I can... I could dominate this if I had a if I still have that paranoia, that'd be really nice. But, um... I could play a Colossus and Psychic Rot, and then just ki just clear everything on his board. You face the God of War. I could just wipe out all of his Psychic Charge right now. I think that's better. That puts him down to one Psychic Charge, which is actually huge, because it means he can't use any of his removal spells that are effective against my Colossus. Like, he can't use um, Dominate, he can't use any of the other really heavy hitting spells because he has low psychic charge. Now, this is the Harbinger of Doom, which does damage whenever you gain a charge. There's Zeal. Now, I think I just hit him. What do I do with the rest is the real question. So I can destroy this. That puts him at 6. I think I'll just kill this guy. And I may just be able to get away with just playing another Colossus, to be honest. I mean, this has zeal, which is a bit of a problem. I think I do like the idea of uh, getting up a Psychic Charge here instead. I'm trying to think what he could do. Actually, I'm not really sure that there is anything he can do to a second Colossus. At least not with his current setup, because he doesn't have any Psychic Charge. So I'm just trying to keep pressure on, because I think the longer this goes, the worse it is for me. So if I can keep up this massive amount of pressure, then I can actually maybe just power through and kill him. The Colossus is pretty hard to handle. The shield is surprisingly useful. Okay, so he's reducing the... Uh, the one. I'm guessing he's going to kill the other one. And he's trying to reduce the attack. Oh. Hmm. Did you make a mistake there? Yeah, if, if he played this and then given himself a uh, a psychic charge, he could easily wipe the board here.
That's infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Yeah, the Mystic uh, killed it. So, I think I want to snipe this Harbinger. Actually, no, I think I want to... I Never mind, he has two, uh, two Faithfuls. Alright, I think what we're going to do here is just try and uh, clear out some of this nonsense. I'm clearing out the Harbinger because it's just the most threatening thing, and I need to start reducing the attack of stuff on this board. So, if he tries to attack, then the uh, Visage will lower its attack by 5, which means that he can uh, try and sack stuff into, um, into my Colossus, for instance. Unfortunately, I can't use Dominate currently. This is the downside of Dominate. This is a very, very strange uh, mirror where neither of us have been able to actually gain any uh, Psychic Charge advantage. Which is very odd. Alright, so now that has zero, zero attack. It's kind of funny that he stole this ages ago. <laughs> Been on the board for a long time. Telekinetic Blast is really nice here. Alright. So we're just going to kill this. Alright. This puts us in a very strange position. Eh, let's see, he's already used two Psychic Grot. So, I mean, any removal spell will kill the Colossus at this point. Uh, I mean, I've got a fairly high chance of drawing into a draw spell at some point. He's actually really low on cards. If I can keep this going for a uh, another, I want to say seven turns, I think I'll win. Just because he'll start fatiguing himself, which is what happens uh, when you get to zero. You start drawing fatigue cards like you do in Hearthstone. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. So yeah, the steel spell is based on like psychic charge down. Now, if he had the four mana steel spell, that would be a major issue. True believer. Okay, this thing is is a big problem now. How on earth do I deal with that? I think what I'm going to do here is just start, like, the attack on it doesn't actually matter much. So I'm actually just going to try and uh, clear out some of the uh, psychic charge. I am in serious trouble, though, right now. Uh, I need a pacify or something similar. Need to get lucky with the pacifier more accurately, but yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, he's really far ahead on board. And there's a zeal, doesn't actually do anything. Um, I can nullify and deal damage. I mean that reduces the attack coming across. So it gives me a little bit of extra time to hopefully draw into something. There's a telekinetic. I'll start reducing the attack on this. Yeah, him getting that dominate off was huge. Uh, I haven't drawn any pacify effects, which means that my draw essence has been fairly useless this game. Alright, so he's got a three turn clock on board currently. That is huge. That will let me deal with the uh, Colossus. That's a very, very big deal. Because this has Cloak, which means he can't interact with it. As he had True Believer. He had the second copy. Yeah, he plays two. Went through the whole deck. Oh well. Yeah, got a little bit unlucky with the lack of pacify effects, which meant that I 
basically couldn't generate psychic charge, so I just lost in the mirror. But all things considered, it was a very close game. All right, on to the second game. Oh, it's a hierarchy player. Uh, I think I probably. I mean, I definitely keep psychic grow. Actually, do I just like this hand in general? Yeah, I think I do. It has a nullify effect and psychic rot and pacify against hierarchy, which love their buffs and they love their zero attack creatures that gain them value. I'm fine with a long game. Generally, I've been pretty okay against hierarchy because there's two styles of hierarchy. There is sort of a buff up one creature style and then there's a maintain board control with lots of value creatures with high HP kind of style. Now the question is do I actually want to start with psychic charge on turn one? I don't think so. I think there's better things I can do with the uh, the initiative. I now have three names to call this thing. The coin, the spark, and the initiative. Although I think in Spellweaver it's called Spark of Initiative or something. So, yeah. Let's see what, uh, let's see what the hierarchy I've got for me here. He's thinking quite a lot about this one. Gargoyle Bomber. That's ah, not a strong play. I do like Emanation here because it sets up my Pacify. I don't want to Pacify this thing, but I do want to Pacify his next play because it's basically a tempo uh, tempo stall. Also, you can't like you can't Pacify Pacified units. Like if there's a Pacified unit on the board, you can't randomly select it with a Pacify effect. But yeah, the Gargoyle Bomber is an interesting one because I'm not a big fan of it. Um, like, I tried it in this deck for a little bit, but the problem was I kept destroying, like, a lot of the random, just low attack stuff on the board that I tend to leave, so it just didn't really work. There were some times when it was really useful, but in other times it just didn't do anything. There's something like the Sniper, for instance, um... Like, it uses energy, but you get to target where you're putting your damage, and it can also go to the face for a little bit of reach. It comes up. Not very often, but it does. <laughs> well, that's not the, uh, the best thing to pacify, but I'll take it. Now, I could just pacify and get the uh, the train rolling here, but I think I prefer getting the Rapid Strike team down. I see actually uh, missed an attack with the Gorgoyle there. I like the, the Rapid Strike team because it leaves him with one creature on the board that is currently pacified, and as soon as he plays something, I'll just pacify or kill it. So if he plays two creatures, I'll just kill one, pacify the other, and then I get to build Psychic Charge. Oh, that's infuriating. Uh... I think I just paranoia this. I mean, it's a 3-3 three, three screen. That's not bad for a paranoia. <laughs> World of screens. I mean, in this case, I can just... Um... Actually, no, I can't because there's two attack now. Hmm. Uh, I think I just go for the Void Probe here. Actually, I can kill it in, uh, in two hits. Or he can spend time using his hero power, which I'm fine with. I've got another two silence effects, so I'm not particularly worried about just not having them. Okay, this is perfect. So, now I can kill the Persistent Effect. I can kill these two, and then I can pacify the other one. And then I'm in a really good spot. So pacify. 
and we'll just get one of these down. So this puts me in a situation where now my draw essence is active because I need two pacified units on the board. So now every single turn I'll gain two psychic essence and that'll start turning on my uh, other powerful effect. Granted, having the um, the module we saw last game where I gain one every single turn would be very, very nice for this deck, but I have not got that card yet. <laughs> So, that would be why I'm not playing it. Something kind of funny though, we're both using the same logic of high life total, but you want to get a card over the 40 life people. So, yeah, we both have 39, which is kind of amusing. What could you do for 7 mana? I'm trying to think of what's concerning. I do have another pacify, so it's not like a... Like, a big creature is actually not concerning at all. Because I just pacify it, and then I start gaining Psychic Essence faster. So... Disintegrate. Okay, so he spends the turn removing... That does leave me with a slightly awkward hero power pass turn. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'll get the Mystic Apprentice out. It's not too useful, but it can't kill anything, really. Like, it would take five shots to kill the Arsenal dropship, and multiple shots to kill this. If we actually see the Nullify, that could be a potential issue. So, Council Patrol is an interesting uh, card, because it randomly nullifies an allied and enemy creature, so you can use it with... Um, well, you can use it to get rid of really annoying effects on your side, but it's... Also has a, a pretty common usage of just being a very, very high stat void probe, but it's random, so you kind of have to uh, take the draw back a little bit. So anyway, I think what we're going to do here is just Psychic Grot this, and then just Pacify. I could Psychic Grot and uh, Colossus. Maybe that's just better. Yeah, because I'm not really doing anything. Um... He's down to only one card, well, two cards in hand. So, I can always just pacify something big if he plays it. Or he could play his own pacified stuff. <laughs> Which, granted, I am, like, it's not, like, a massively good thing for me, because, well, yeah, he gets a free attack in, I have to kill it anyway, but, it's, you never know. It does mean I get to mind wipe this to kill it. So we can go ahead and kill this. Uh, and then we can just pacify the other... They call dropships? Yeah, dropship. And now at this point, like, the gunboat, it buffs everything, but it doesn't actually matter. And I can... <laughs> Yep, now I can steal it. So, use the hero power. Steal this, and now I have a ton of damage coming over, and I should be able to close out this game fairly quickly from here. Yeah, there's not a lot he can do at this point. This is a lot of damage. i uh, just reduce that uh, attack. So that leaves them dead next turn. Yeah, this feels like a lot more of a, uh, a normal draw for this deck, which is just a couple pacify effects and sort of some uh, some slow controlling type effects. It does work very, very well against other control decks in particular. As is evident. Um, but yeah, the Anunnaki mirrors are a bit... Well, I mean, Anunnaki mirrors are always a little bit... Um, sort of almost tempo driven where it's like if you can gain psychic charge you'll probably win because a lot of your cards are based off it um so it's really about getting your engine for psychic charge going faster but anyway so that was uh two fairly long control mirrors we didn't run into any aggro decks uh there are a couple running around there's uh, a hadir gog aggro deck there's a consortium aggro deck that you run in from time to time uh, but besides that, there's a Terran sort of board-sweeping control deck, which you can run into a lot. That can be a bit rough. 
but overall, fairly diverse ladder from what I've seen at least. Um, granted that I am at the lower end of the rankings, but still. But anyway, that will about do me for Star Crusade. Now, the game has been reasonably impressive. Uh, it's not perfect, there are a couple problems with it. However, I do think overall, uh, considering it's in early development phase and the dev team have been listening to feedback and implementing it very, very quickly, uh, well, all things relative, I actually think the game will do very well once it goes to release. I think there's a couple things they have to fix. Um, mostly just aesthetic stuff with like text. I think some of the card text could be rewritten a little bit, uh, which would be appreciated. But besides that, I do like the game. Uh, it does feel a little bit like Hearthstone in space to some extent, but I think that the module system does add a bit more deck diversity, which is appreciated. So there's actually more deck building to do with the reduced card set life. If you compare um, Star Crusade's base set to Hearthstone's base set, I think there's a lot more to do uh, with deck building, just because a lot of those extra card slots are devoted to modules, which are deck defining cards. So there's just a lot more. There's a lot more thought you can put into decks, which I really like about this game. But anyway, if you want to check out the game, there's a referral link in the description. There's also a promo code that will let you get a bit of a head start into the game, get some free packs, credits, and uh, crafting materials. But as for now, Thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or want to ask me any questions, put it in the comment section below. That's now, it's been Jotto, signing off.